Good evening. Hello, I'm, I'm Anne-Marie Winterburn from Spot On Driving, helping learner drivers pass their theory test and pass their driving test and helping them be more confident about taking those tests as well. So um, I'm going to be talking about the theory test. I've been asked to talk about what are the most important topics to revise for the theory test. So I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about that for you. So if you think it's useful for anybody else, then please like, please share this video so we can help, I can help more and more people. So first of all, I'm going to talk about how to prepare for the theory test and then how to do your last minute revision and the subjects that you need to revise. Um, so obviously I'm going to say that you need to revise all of your theory tests. This is to do with last minute revision. What should be, you be doing at the last minute just before your test? Um, so make sure you have done all the preparation by going through the books. So there's three books. I haven't got them here with me. Let me just grab them. Okay, so the, te the questions in the theory test are based on the information in the highway code, the information in driving the essential skills and the information in know your traffic signs. So that's one way of preparing for your test is getting those books and going through them. Another way of preparing for your test is to get um, to to enroll onto my workshop. So my workshop has um, everything you need to pass your theory test. So all the knowledge that you need to know from these books is in video tutorials, worksheets, facts lists, and then you get access to it, an app as well. So you want to, another thing you want to do is make sure you've seen all the questions in an app. Now there are over 800 of them, so you can't just do one or two mock tests and think think that you've seen all the questions because you haven't that will only be a hundred of them so and even if you do lots of mock tests you may not be seeing all of the questions so make sure you've seen all the questions and been through the whole of an app so you can either get the books or you can get a workshop and an app um, and you can roll and roll onto my workshop obviously um, and and get an access to an app as well if you go through it all, then you are fully prepared. But what do you want to do after you've been through it all? Firstly, what you want to do is make sure you do some mock tests and make sure you've passed between three and five mock tests consecutively. So not pass one, fail one, pass two, fail three. So make sure you pass them consecutively, one after the other. All the way through your revision, you should be doing hazard perception clips. Because remember, you need to pass the questions and the hazard perception on the same day. I know people that have passed the questions and failed the hazard perception. So they practice the hazard perception, and the next time they fail the questions. So you really want to, whatever stage you're up to, you need to be practicing both parts. Um, I will liken it to a, um, a professional football player. They don't get really good at scoring and then stop practicing. In fact, they'll do more practicing than ever. A professional tennis player, Andy Murray, he doesn't, he can hit the ball really well, he doesn't stop practicing, he keeps on practicing, keeps on practicing that forehand, keeps on practicing his backhand, keeps on practicing his serve, he doesn't say I can do it well enough, I don't need to practice anymore, even though I'm coming up to a competition. So you're approaching your test, you need to practice both parts. Um, because what you don't want to do, what wouldn't be, re wouldn't be good at all is to fail one part because you haven't practiced it enough. So you've been through the whole workshop, you've been through an app, you've seen all the questions and you've practiced lots and lots of hazard perception clips. You should have passed three to five mock tests and you should be getting mostly three, four or five in your hazard perception clips. But don't worry if the occasional clip you're not scoring or you're getting one or two. So long as most of them you're getting three, four or five, then you'll be fine. So what are the last minute topics 
that you need to revise. So this is where sort of maybe the hardest topics or the hardest types of questions, the questions that people are getting wrong. So it used to be stopping distances, but we don't get asked those particular distances anymore in your test. What you will be expected to know is on good dry roads, it takes two seconds. You need to be two seconds behind the car in front. On wet roads, it's four seconds. And on icy roads, it's 10 times. So it's 10 times, which is 20 seconds. Okay, so remember that. The other questions that people tend to get wrong is the reflective studs. I explain it really, really easily and simply. A really simple way to remember it in my workshop. What colour are the reflective studs? And as so long as you know that between your lanes and the other lanes, that middle bit is called the central reservation. And so long as you know that the the hard shoulder is over to the left, then my way of remembering the reflective studs is really, really simple. So have a look at that on the workshop. Documents. Just go through the documents, the, the documents that you need to, to have a car, to buy a car, um, what the documents are, and talk about it with somebody. Maybe just pretend you're buying a car. I think when, once you've bought a car, it gets a whole lot easier. But before you've bought a car, or if you've had help from um, a partner or a parent, then it can be quite tricky to know. Um, but once you've bought a car, it's much, much easier. So just go through it, talk about it, or pretend you're buying a car, just have that conversation. And that will get it into your head. Because if you talk about things, then it's in your head, and you can get that information. All you've got to do is just focus on the question. The information will pop into your head if you've talked about it. Remember that um, uh, Pelican Crossings have a flashing amber light. Flashing amber means that you, as the driver, can go, can cross, if the crossing's clear. So you need to remember that. That's a question that people often um, get confused about. Flashing amber means you can go. This is why you need to go th thoroughly through the theory because you don't want to be a driver and sat there behind the line when it's flashing amber because people behind are going to get slightly irritated if it means that you can go and you're not going. So remember that question. Another question people tend to get confused with is when is it okay to undertake so when is it okay for to uh, to pass vehicles on the on the left? So if you're on a one-way street, obviously it doesn't matter who's going um, faster than the other. Okay, so on a one-way street, that's one. Um, when the vehicle in front of you is turning right, they tend to move to the right of the lane, don't they? And that's so that you can get past. If the road's wide enough, you can get past them. So when the person in front of you is turning right, then you can undertake. And then there's when you're in traffic queues, so let's say you're on a motorway and it's slow moving traffic, then it's okay to go past the vehicles in the right hand lanes when you're in the left lane. Okay, so that's three ways. Another question, sort of quite often people will say to me that they get the, the questions they got wrong was on signs. So go through the signs. Go through the signs, know what the shapes mean um, and know what the red, red circle or blue circle, blue must do, red must not do, remember that. A couple of signs that people tend to get wrong are, first of all, they get confused with these ones. And you see those clearly. So this one, look, the arrows are going up and down. So it means there's two-way traffic straight ahead of you. This one is two-way traffic crossing on route ahead. So two-way traffic is going across this way. So two-way traffic ahead and two-way traffic across. Okay, so have a look at those and um, try and remember that. It's easy when you know, isn't it? This is one that people get confused about because it's just a red circle with nothing in it. Well, what it means is that no vehicles are allowed. Okay, so no motor vehicles. So 
um, bicycles can go if they're being pushed. Okay, but no, no vehicles. All vehicles prohibited. Sorry, so it's not all most vehicles. It's all vehicles. No vehicles at all. So only bikes if they're being pushed. And then this one, red circle, so you can't do it. Two red lines means no stopping. Okay, so no stopping on the main carriageway. Think of those two red lines as two red lines painted on the road surface. And the red circle always means must not do. So you must not stop on this road. So uh, have a look at bus lane signs as well. And... Um, Yeah, have a look at bus lane signs and it has something else in my head then. And um, on one way streets. And that's another question that people tend to get wrong. So let's just go over that quickly. What do you need to do? You need to either go through the books or go through my workshop um, and, and, and an app. The app has all the questions. You want to have seen all the questions. Make sure you're doing has a perception clips all the way through. You want to pass both parts on the same day. Um, for last minute revision, you want to look at, remember about those stopping distances. What did, I didn't say anything about the stopping distances. What I didn't say is, you need to know the two seconds, four seconds, and 10 times. But what affects your stopping distance? What's going to affect how quickly you stop the car? It's going to be your tires. Um, it could be um, how heavy the car is, it could be the road surface, it could be you the driver. If you're tired or you're arguing with somebody, you're not going to get um, to the brake pedal as quickly. Or if you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you're not going to get to the brake pedal as quickly. So it's those kind of things that will affect how quickly you, the car actually stops how good your brakes are, how good your tyres are, how good the road surface is, how good you are, um, you know, are you paying attention? I talked about the reflective stud documents, amber flashing light at the Pelican Crossing means you can go undertaking on one way streets when the vehicle in front of you is turning right or when you're in a traffic queue. And then we talked about signs like these ones, traffic going, um, two-way two traffic ahead, two-way traffic across. Um, so go through the signs um, and practice those questions in particular on your, on, your, on your app. If you're not getting the mock tests, then keep going through the topics. Look at the topics where you're getting questions wrong and go through those particular topics again. I hope that helps. And um, good luck with your theory test. Please like and share this video and I will see you again soon. Bye.